for Yamari on here. I'd like to first off uh, give all thanks to Yahweh Baha Hashem Yahweh Shah. All right, this is a cold cut on how to think meditation, how to think pleasing thoughts in these last days and meditating. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's start with Sirach chapter 16 and verse 23. He that wanteth understanding will think upon vain things. So a man that wants understanding is going to always think about vain things, things that are not important, right? Carnal minded, things that please the flesh. And a foolish man erring imagineth follies. So a foolish man is going to think about folly things. Things that won't, won't profit you in the day of judgment, right? Those type of things. Let's go get uh, Romans 8 and 4. <clears throat> that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. The righteousness in the, of the law will be fulfilled in us if we walk after the spirit, not after the flesh, right? Not trying to please the flesh all the time, not trying to smoke, not trying to have sex all the time, not trying to do things that please the flesh in any way. Which are to please your spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. So you're, if you're th always thinking about how to please the flesh, you're walking in the flesh. Or you gotta always think about how to uh, please the spirit, right? That's where wisdom comes in. Verse 6 For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, okay? Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. So if you're carnal minded, that's enmity. You're against you're against Yahweh when you think like that. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they are so then so then they that are in the flesh cannot please Yahweh. So if you're in the flesh, you cannot please God at all. Alright? Can't please God at all. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 24 and 9. Because the thoughts of the thoughts of foolishness can be sin, man. We gotta understand that that if you think foolish thoughts all day, that's sin. Because if you think foolish thoughts, you're eventually gonna start saying foolish things. Then next, you know, you're gonna start doing foolish things. All starts up here. All right. This is Proverbs chapter twenty-four and verse nine. Then it says, "The thought of foolishness is sin, and the scorner is an abomination to men." Okay. So the thoughts of foolishness can be sin. Right, so you can't be thinking about vain things all day. That's not that's going off. You have to think about how to please your, uh, how to please your Creator, how to be a, a good servant under the Most High. That's how you get wisdom, and that's how you uh, um, walk after the Spirit. All right. Let's go to Sirach chapter twenty three and verse eighteen. All right, and it says Sirach chapter twenty eight. 23 and verse 18 a man that breaketh wedlock saying thus in, the, in his heart who seeth me i am compassed about with darkness the walls cover me and nobody seeth me what need i to fear the most i will not remember my sins so a foolish man a, a man thinking about vain things all the time is going to be like nobody's going to see me if i break wedlock no if i do this sin nobody's going to see me god's not going to remember my sin who am i out of all these people right who am I out of all these people? He's not going to see me, right? You can't be doing that. Because look, such a man only feareth the eyes of men and know, knoweth not that the eyes of the Lord are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. So of course the Most High created the sun. His eyes are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. There's angels all around you taking notes, taking recording your thoughts, man, recording what you do, how you act. There's angels all around you. You, you're only fearing the sight of men. Okay, that man can't see me. He doesn't know what I'm doing. Man, the Lord sees what you're doing, man. These angels seeing what you're doing, they're probably laughing at you. Like, what is this man doing? You can't see them. They're in the spirit world. And it says, beholding all the ways of men and considering the most secret parts. So the most high sees everything you're doing, all the secret ways of men, all your deepest, deepest, deepest thought, man. All right? The, bro, the Lord sees everything you're doing. Okay, like it says in Sirach chapter uh, 16 and verse 17, say not thou, I will hide myself from the Lord. Shall any remember me from above? So don't say I'm going to hide myself from the Lord. Shall, is anybody going to remember me? Who am I to all these people that are on the earth? Right. I shall not be remembered among so many people from what is my soul among such an infinite number of creatures. Right, so you thinking what? Well, what is my God? Not really dealing. He's not dealing with me. He's dealing with somebody else right now. I can do this sin, and maybe he, he won't see it. No, no, the Lord's gonna see everything you're doing ten thousand times brighter than the sun. He created you. He sees everybody, man. Okay. 
you can't be going off. You can't be saying, you can't only fear the sight of man, right? Don't even fear man at all. You're supposed to fear Yahweh. All right, let me go to Acts 5 and 30. Because you ought to please God rather than men. Galatians 1 and 10. This is Acts chapter 5 and verse uh, 29. And then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey Yahweh rather than men. So you ought to obey God rather than men. You're not supposed to be trying to obey man at all. You're not supposed to fear man. And No, you're supposed to be fearing Yahweh. Baha Shem Yahweh Shah, man. Let's go to Galatians chapter 1 and verse 10. For do I now persuade men or Yahweh, or do I seek to please men, or if I if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of, Yah, of uh, Hamashiach. So if you try to please men, you're not supposed to be a servant of uh, 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 yeah, um, Hamashiach, Christ. You're not supposed to be a servant of him because you're, all you're doing is trying to please men and persuade men. Right? Verse 10, for do I not persuade men or God? That's a rhetorical. Do I persuade men or God? That's God, man. That's Yahweh. That's your creator. You're supposed to be a servant of him, not other men. Okay, let's go to Psalm chapter 46 and verse 10. All right, Psalms chapter 46 and verse 10. Because you got Jake's out here that is up on the go all the time, man. Oh, I gotta go here, I gotta go here. Okay, then after I go here, I gotta make that move. You gotta sometimes you just gotta sit still and just think and meditate. That's the best thing sometimes you can do, man. All right. This is Psalms chapter 46 and verse 10. Be still and know that I am Yahweh. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. So the Lord is telling you, be still, know that he is the Lord. So meditating, thinking about your spirit. How can you get your spirit right? How can you, how can you please the creator, man? That's all you should be thinking about. Jake is always on the go. Got to make moves. Got to make moves. Got to make moves, man. Thinking about tomorrow, the next week, the next week after that, months in advance. Be still and know that the, the Lord is the Lord, man. Okay? He will be exalted among the heathen, right? And in the earth. He's coming back, man. He's got to be still in this. Sometimes, Jake, you just got to chill out, man. Okay? Let's go to Matthew chapter 15 and verse 19. Yeah, how was Shah new spirits, man? He knew spirits. He knew what men men were thinking. That's why he didn't hang around so many people, man. He knew the spirits of man. He created those spirits, man. He knew what comes out of their mouths. He knew what they thought, man. Okay? This is Matthew chapter 15 and verse 19. And it says... Let me go to 15. Let me start at 15. Then answer Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. And Yahweh said, Are you also yet without understanding? Verse 17. Do you do not you uh yet understand that who whatsoever entereth in as the at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the drought? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they that defile the man. So Yahweh I said, whatever goes into you, it comes right back out, right? When you use the bathroom. But whatever you say, that can't be taken back, man. Right? That what you say can defile you, man. Not what you well, not what you eat, not what you drink, what you, what you say defiles you, man. For out of the heart, so out of the mind, proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemy, so lies. These are the things which defile a man. So all those things can defile you as a man, okay? But to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. So you might have your grandma, your grandpa, wash your hands before you eat. Right? Do this before you eat. Wash your hands before you do this. Those things don't, that doesn't defile you as a man, as a woman. That doesn't defile you. It's what you think, man. Because you can be thinking about sex and fornication all day. You wash your hands and you eat. You think you're clean. You're not clean. You're actually, you're actually unclean. You're dirty. How is Shah's telling you? Yeah, I was telling you, you're not just because you wash your hands and think that you clean. No, nah, because you inside, you're still thinking about, you can be thinking about murder, right? And you wash your hands, you're thinking about, oh, yeah, I'm going to do this to him. I'm going to kill her. I'm going to do this to her. I'm going to smoke this. No, man, you're defiling yourself. Okay? That's what that's talking about. Let's go to Psalms. Uh, let's go to Sirach 
chapter 23 and 1. Because all of that, you can, there's a prayer to scourge your thoughts, man, that, there's a prayer to scourge your thoughts. Sarah chapter 23 and 1. When you think about all these things, man, ask the most how to scourge your thoughts. Because he's the only one that's going to do it, man. He's the only one that can do it. And it says, O Lord, Father and Governor of my whole life, leave me not to their counsels and let me not fall by them. Who will set scourges over my thoughts and the discipline of wisdom over my heart? And they spare me not from my ignorances and it pass not by my sins. Lest my ignorances increase and my sins abound to my destruction, and I fall before mine adversaries, and my enemy rejoice over me, whose hope is far who's far from thy mercy. Right? O Lord, Father and God of my life, give me not a proud look, but turn away from thy servants always a haughty mind. So you should also be praying for the Lord to take out any type of pride that's in you. You might not even know you'd be prideful. You may say something prideful, you might be thinking it's a joke, but it's not a joke. Right? You have to, you, you ask the Lord to take that out of you, man. Verse five, turn away from me vain hopes and concupiscence, right? Evil sexual desire, man. And thou shalt hold him up that is desirous always to serve thee. Let not the greediness of the belly nor lust of flesh take hold of me, okay? And give not over me thy servant to an impudent mind. So don't, don't, you don't want to take hold of the lust of the flesh, man. Because you're going to be thinking about those things Yahweh said in Matthew 15 and 19. Murders, right? Adultery, fornication, thefts, false witness, blasphemies, man. That's how you, you're pleasing the flesh when you think about all those things. Okay? Verse 7. Hear, you, hear all ye children, the discipline of the mouth. He that keepeth it shall never be taken in his lips. So this, like the mouth, like I said, what Yahweh Shah said in verse 18, verse 17. What, the, what goes into you, right? It doesn't defile you because it's going to come back out. But what you say, that defiles you as a man. Okay? Verse 8. The sinner shall be left in his foolishness, but both the evil speaker and the proud shall fall thereby. Right? So, Shirek to... Syrac chapter 23 and 1 verse 8. That's a prayer that you can say to the most high to scourge your thoughts and take the pride out of you. Not to give you over to a reprobate mind. Okay. Let's go to Psalms chapter 4 and 4. Alright. Psalms chapter 4 and verse 4. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. So the most high is saying, commune upon, commune upon your bed, man. Be still, man. Okay? Standing on sin not, man. Just, just lay on your bed and just be still and just think, man. Meditate, bro. Meditation is key. Some, I, I try to meditate, man. I'm trying to meditate more, man, because it, it helps you, man. It helps you start your day out, man. You can meditate doing anything. You can meditate walking in the shower once you get up. Just, just take 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 10 minutes of your time just to think, right? At the end of the day, you meditate, you reflect on what you did that day, man. What you went off on, how you can better yourself every day. That's, that's what you're supposed to be doing, right? So be still, man. Commune upon your, with your own, with your own mind on your own bed, man. That's what the Most High is telling us. Okay? Let's go to Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. It's a little classic precept right here. And it says, This book of the law shall not depart, of thy, depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Right, so this book should not. You have some jakes that really think you got to eat this Bible. No, that's not what it's talking about. Right, that's not what it's talking about. You have to always be in these scriptures. You have to always think upon these scriptures. You should always meditate there in day and night. That you always have to observe to do according to. And it says that 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 thou mayest uh, observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. So you always have to observe what, that you're doing the laws and commandments in here. You got to meditate on this book day and night. Meditation is key, man. You have to do that. Because if you're not meditating, you, you, how can you possibly remember all these things, man? How can you think upon these scripts in different situations, man? You have to meditate on it. Okay? 
Let's go to Sirach chapter 6 and 37. Actually, Sirach chapter 39 and verse 1. But he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High and is occupied in the meditation thereof will seek out the wisdom of all the ancient and be occupied in prophecies. So if you if you give your mind to the law of the Most High and is occupied in the meditation, man, you will seek out the wisdom of the ancient. So the wisdom of the ancient was like our forefathers, man. King Solomon, man, he had wisdom immeasurable, man. Okay, you got to be occupied in these prophecies. You're supposed to be watching these times, man. You got to be a watchman, man. You have to be spiritually on your toes at all times because all hell can break loose at any moment, man. Okay? Let's go to Sirach chapter 16, 6 and 37. Sirach chapter 6 and verse 37. And it says, Let thy mind in upon the ordinances of the Lord and meditate continually in his commandments. So let your mind always be upon the ordinances of the Lord, man. And, all, and it says meditate continually in his commandments. So you always have to be meditating in his commandments, man. Continually. Always thinking about these scriptures, man. And it says, he shall establish thine own heart and give and give thee wisdom at thine own desire. So the most I will establish your mind, man. He will set your thoughts right. And he will give you wisdom at your own desire, man. At your own desire, what King Solomon had, he was always meditating. He was always thinking about these scriptures, man. Most wisest man in the world knew how the world was created, the state it was in at his at, at that point in time, and how it was going to end. He was a very smart man, right? He didn't need school and Esau's philosophy and systems and different things to know about these. Man, he was, he was wise, man. And the most I can give you that is always stay in these scriptures. I'm going to go to Sirach chapter 14 and verse 20. Blessed is the man that doth meditate good things in wisdom, right? So Jake will be in the world. Oh, I'm blessed. I got this. I'm blessed. I got this car. Oh, I'm blessed. God got me this. God, God got me this. First of all, no, that was Satan that got you that. Blessed. And what is this most I say blessed is? Blessed is the man that doth meditate good things in wisdom. So you meditating good things in wisdom. You meditating on this Bible 24-7, right? And that reason, reason of holy things by his understanding he that considereth her ways in his heart shall give us shall also have understanding in her secrets, man. So you're gonna have understanding and wisdom a lot, man, if you meditate in these scriptures and you apply this to your life, man. Because if you don't apply this to your life, that's a big thing. If you don't apply this to your life, you probably you're gonna die a smart man. You don't know all these things. But if you apply it to your life, that's what gives you wisdom, man. The most high will give you that wisdom, okay? Let's go to first Timothy chapter four and verse thirteen. First Timothy chapter four and verse 13. And it says, I'm going to start at. Hold on a second. First, I'm going to start at verse 12. Let no man despise thy youth, but be, but be thou an example of the believers in word and convert in conversation. Right, so you have to be an example of these people that believe, man, on your how we shop. Be an example of the believers in the word in conversation. So covering how we speak in charities. We gotta give, man. In spirit, right? They look at your spirit, they're like, man, that he has a right spirit, man. Because you can tell by some some people's spirit sometimes, man. That man off. Right? In faith, in purity, man. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Right. So the most I say, until he's until he's coming, man, give attendance to reading, man, exhortation to doctrine. So you have to always be studying these scriptures. Neglect not the gift that is in thee. So this is a gift, man. We understand these scriptures like in Matthew chapter 13, verse 16, man. Not, bless, not everybody can understand these scriptures, man. Not everybody can hear the things that you're hearing, man. You're blessed, man. This is a gift that you can. Have. This is a gift. From the most high to you, man. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, right? With the laying on the hands of the presbytery. Meditate, meditate upon these things. So you have to meditate upon these things, these scriptures, man. And give thyself wholly to them. So give yourself to them, man. Apply this to your life. 
that thou profiting may appear to all, man. This will appear to all, man. Your profit will appear to all. So you have to meditate on these things continually. Let's go to Psalms chapter 1 and verse 1. This is probably one of my favorite scriptures. That's a lot. Psalms chapter 1 and verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. So you're blessed, man, when somebody comes up to you, hey, are you trying to smoke this weed with me? You're blessed when you say, nah, man, I'm trying to keep these laws and commandments. You're blessed when a, a girl or a boy hits your line, hits your phone and talking about, I'm trying to have sex, I'm trying to do this with you, and you say, nah, I'm trying to keep these commandments, I don't need that right now. You're blessed, right? Not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sitteth in a way of sinners, right? nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, bro. So if your delight is in the law of the Lord, what? And in, the, in his law doth he meditate day and night. So in his law, you have to meditate day and night, like Joshua 1 and 8 says, all right? Sirach 6 and 37, Sirach 14 and 20, man. And he shall be like a tree planted by rivers of waters, man. This is the living waters, man. You're going to be like a tree. Right, this seed, this the Most High put a seed in you, man. You you read this Bible, you study this Bible, you're gonna be planted like a tree, man. You're gonna grow in this knowledge. That's what it's saying. You're gonna grow in this knowledge. Growing, you're gonna grow in wisdom like a tree, man. Okay, and it says that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not uh, wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So whatever you're going to do is going to prosper, right? Your leaf is not going to wither at all. Okay. Let's uh, get one more script. Let's get uh, Psalms 119, verse one, uh, 15. Psalms 119, verse 15. And it says... Psalms 119 and verse 15. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. For I will delight, I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. So I will meditate in these precepts, man. David said, I will med David said, I will meditate in these precepts, man. All you have to always be meditating in these precepts. You have to, if you're a man in this truth, you have to know how to teach, because you have to teach. You have to push this truth. That's one of the duties. That's a commandment. That's one of the duties. Of entering this truth. You have to know how to do that, man. You have to meditate. You have to think about good things, not vain things and follies, man. You have to meditate on these precepts and have respect to the ways of the Most High. These, This is our custom. This is the way of the Most High. If you love me, keep my commandments, John 14 and 15. Delight myself in thy statues. I would not forget thy word. Don't ever forget this word, man. You have to always do this, okay? Okay, that was another cold cut about meditations and uh, staying in the spirit and just thinking about uh, um, this book of the law. Just thinking about wise things, good things, and, and wisdom, and not thinking about follies. Shalom, Israel.